with with respect to that question, um, I know vaccines are going to be a hot topic, um, you know, really throughout the remainder of the season. And, you know, we're having conversations as team as a, as a team. And um, I'm going to keep those conversations and uh, choices of my myself and my teammates um, in house. So. Hey, Josh, it's Kim Jones. How are you doing? Good, Kim. How are you doing? Good to see Good. you. It's, it's great to see you. Um, I'm just wondering, as you put to rest um, last season, did you do some self-evaluation and did you come into this spring? And knowing you, you were back at it pretty soon after the season ended. But did you come into this season with some specific goals saying, I can still do this, this, and this better? Yeah, and I think uh, that's a good question. You know, a couple couple things it boils down to still still in the decision making end um, as far as where the ball should go in, in, in a given situation um, based on what the defense is doing, understanding and being better in situational football, uh, ball security in the pocket, and while I take off and running. Um, you know, a couple couple types of concepts that I need to continue to work on uh, route routes as well, i.e. the in cut. Um, you know, throws to my left. You know, just trying to be more concise. Um, better with my footwork and better with the ball placement. So, you know, it, as many good things as we did last year, there was still a lot of stuff on tape where I look back and it's like, why, why did I do this? And I think that's the common theme every year. And that's really cool that uh, you get to look back. And like I said, even, even though um, the wins, the numbers, all that stuff, it, it looked good on paper. There's still so much room to improve. And I'm excited for that process. And if I may, Josh, you've become kind of a a poster guy for, for the improvement that a quarterback can make, whether people were talking about Trey Lance or whether they're talking about Daniel Jones. Do you embrace that at all? Like, like for all the people that may or may not have counted you out back then, they're now so saying like, look at Josh Allen. He's the example. Yeah. It's a, it's a different situation to be in, I guess, <laughs> since the first couple of years I've uh, been in the league, but um, you know, I'm not really looking to, to be that poster child or whatever whatever you may say. I'm just trying to be the best quarterback for the Bills I can be and the best version of myself every time I step in this facility. Um, and, and like I said, when I got drafted, prove this team right, make them look like they made the right, the right decision. Always thank you, Josh. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Kim. Good to see you. Josh, John Morrow, how you doing? Good to see you, John. Good to see you. Um, without getting into your personal decisions and whatever, but just if you can, I mean, how much... As, as much as we all know that this is a personal choice in regards to vaccinations, how much do players, and especially the leadership group, have to take into account the needs of the team? And as you know, Sean just told us, he said health and safety, it's a two-pronged thing, health and safety, and you've also got to do, um, uh, I'm sorry, but you've also got to do um, something to the effect of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm blowing this quote, um, comes into play right now. Um, and there's also what you've got to do to do your job. So how much, pardon me for, for, for goofing up that question, but how much do you have to, do the team leaders have to take those two things into account in making this decision no, or making the, your own personal decisions? Um, I mean, like I said, we're, we're having internal discussions about that as a team. And as far as the leadership council goes as well, um, you know, what the right answer is and how to go about it, we're, we're not sure. And we're, we're trying to get to a conclusion. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're letting everybody make their own personal decision on, on this matter. And um, that's really all I have to say about that. Is, and I, just, just as a follow-up, because Sean talked about the fact that he's concerned that time is running out and that the time frame, especially for the two-shot vaccine, is six weeks and could bump into, um, uh, you know, the start of training camp. Is time frame, I mean, are these discussions to a certain extent time sensitive, knowing that you've got that are, uh, some kind of a consensus or whatever you want to say needs to be reached sooner than later? Um, I mean, I'm sure sooner is better than later. Um, but again, whether it's masking up or getting tested every day and, and making sure we're doing the right things at the facility, whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, that's the decision that we have to live with as a team. Um, so again, yeah, that's, I, I really don't have much to say on that topic other, other than that. I respect that. Thank you, Josh.
So uh, I'm muted. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Josh. George Radney. Good afternoon, Josh. George Radney, Challenger Community News. Good, good to see you, George. All right. Good to see you too. Can't believe it's time for football already. Mm -hmm. And and with the start of these OTAs, have you guys started already working on crowd noise uh, for the upcoming season? Because now the crowds are most likely going to come back this year, and you're going to have to dedicate a lot of time to crowd noise. Have, have you guys started with that uh, this week? No, oh, yeah. The first the first drill we did as a team, there was crowd noise, so it was it was good to get out there and feel that again. Um, and obviously, last year the luxury of being able to go into a, an away game and not have to deal with the crowd noise and being able to make checks at the line and deal with your snap count um, in an easier fashion. And, you know, it was, uh, it was awesome, but we understand that that's probably not what it's going to be like this year. And we got to practice everything that we can. And coach McDermott's extremely, extremely good and detail oriented when it comes to practice and trying to focus on the little things that matter. Um, and that's just one of those little things that, that makes a huge impact on a game. So, um, you know, we're going to try to get as many uh, opportunities, uh, uh, that we can with the, with the crowd noise and you know I'm, I'm excited again for that and being able to try to be the best team um, at operating at, at an away stadium whether it's communication or checks or signals uh, making sure that we're getting to line um, but starting that process now is what's going to help us during the regular season yeah and, and one last question on that point how, how much what percentage would you think that is uh, of uh, affects a team in any given game uh home or away with, with crowd noise I mean, I, I definitely think it matters where you play. Um, there are certain stadiums that are, um, I mean, you can't even hear your own thoughts, you know, going back to that, that game in Kansas City last year, it's Arrowhead's known as one of the loudest stadiums. Um, but even with what, what, whatever it was, I think 17,000 people in the, in the stands, I mean, making calls and checks at the line uh, and trying to do that before the play clock is over, um, you know, that it, it presents a challenge. So, uh, and like I said, that practice that we can start getting now is going to pay dividends in the season. Excellent. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You as well, George. Dr. Josh, Mookie Hawkins, Buffalo Sports Today. How's it going, big guy? I'm good, Mook. How you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing good, man. Hey, happy belated birthday. And those Thank ones you. you had on, those ones you had on was pretty crispy, by the way. Oh, you like those? <laughs> yeah, I like those. I like those. But uh, one thing I do like is this year's roster and Guys you have rapport with, like Tanner Gentry, Jacob Hollister out of Wyoming, and practically being with the same guys for, you know, these three years, how much comfortability does that give your confidence a boost year four? I mean, it creates a, a very good space. Just being able to talk with guys um, in a very comfortable fashion, you know, being in the same system now for going on the fourth year and having that rapport that I have with Dable and Coach Dorsey, and understanding really our offense in and out and being able to relay that, relay that to my, uh, to my teammates. And, um, you know, I've always said that the job of the quarterback is to be an extension of the offensive coordinator and have to understand what he wants in certain situations. Um, and by, by me knowing that I get to relay that to my teammates and allow us to try to have better success on the field. So it's, uh, it's a blessing to be, you know, in this situation, not many people have that luxury of being in the same system and understanding and knowing guys, um, uh, on a personal level um, for as long as I have. So um, definitely blessed here. Absolutely, man. And speaking on that, you know, this off season, I know with the, with the great season that you had last year, what specifically did you focus on after putting it all together last year? Yeah. I mean, again, every year presents a new challenge. Um, so getting in and getting back with the guys, and um, learning our playbook, even better, understanding defenses, even better um, trying to find, ways I can and be better and, and more concise in delivering the football, um, especially on certain routes, like I alluded to earlier. Um, but you, you always have to find a way to get better because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And uh, we understand that as a team. And, you know, we're not guaranteed anything this next season. You know, just because we played in the AFC championship game doesn't mean that we're going to, you know, win, win any games next year. So we got to put the work in now uh, so it pays off later. Absolutely, man. Welcome back to football and enjoy camp. Thanks, Moop. Good to see you. Hey, Josh, other Prusak here. Good to see you. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, just how beneficial you mentioned uh, continuity with your receivers, but how about on the offensive line with the way that Brandon was able to bring back those key pieces to the O-line and to have that continuity intact there on the line? No, yeah, being able to have guys that, again, know the system, uh, that communicate well, that know each other, um, 
and know what to expect from each other. I think that's huge, especially in the O-line, um, because if you can have that trust in, in the guy to the left or right of you or both, um, it makes your job a lot easier understanding certain blocking schemes and, and having that trust um, that you're going to get the double team uh, in, the, in the calls wherever you're going to get them. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know how he did it, but he did. And uh, I'm glad to have the guys that we have back. And uh, I love those guys. And, um, you know, they're the heartbeat of this team, you know, and they don't get enough credit for, for what they do and what they did last year. So, um, you know, I'm excited to have them back. And again, we got to, we got to continue to find ways to, to work and get better. And I got no doubt that the guys that we have are going to do that. Obviously you don't have John Brown this year, but a new addition is Emmanuel Sanders. We haven't been able to talk to you, just kind of your thoughts on, on the addition uh, of bringing a guy like that in. I mean, you look at what he did last year, um, you know, and kind of switching through a couple of different quarterbacks, but had a lot of success last year. And obviously throughout his career, he's been, you know, one of the best receivers in the game. Um, and, you know, watching him on film, it's fun. He's still got a lot of juice left. And uh, the way that he gets in and out of breaks, um, the way that he breaks down, um, and just his ability to route run. And then you throw that in with the continuity that he has with Beasley of being college teammates and um, being able to find concepts that he likes and be able to incorporate them into what we're doing here. Um, you know, he's going to have, uh, you know, a really good year and we're excited to have him. So, um, you know, he's going to help us out a lot. Cool. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Thank you, Heather. Hey, Josh, good to see you. Um, Obviously, the team picked up your fifth-year option, and now the next step is working on an extension. How much do you focus on it, especially knowing that there's still years left on your contract? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be the best quarterback that I can be for the Bills, and uh, that's, that's why as players, most of us, not all of us, but most of us have, have agents to take care of that side of things. And, um, you know, again, that's, that's, in, that's the least – most thing I'm, I'm worrying about right now. I'm just trying to find ways that I can get better and, and be better for this team and um, help us accomplish the goal that we want to accomplish. So is there a preference to maybe, would it be to get it done sooner rather than later? So the conversation stops or, or you, it's that far out of your mind that it doesn't matter. I mean, one, it doesn't matter, but uh, I think, think on your guys's end, uh, getting it done quick would uh, kill all these questions that you have about it. But um, again, I, I'm focused on, like I said, being the best version of myself, um, being the best quarterback, the best leader that I can be for this team um, day in and day out. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Hey, Josh. Uh, Josh Reed here. How are you? I'm good, Josh. Good to see you. Good Good to see you as well. Um, I know in the past you've had certain games that you've kind of filed away in the back of your mind that kind of have driven you to, to, to excel. Is Kansas City one of those games now that you've kind of put in the back of your mind where it pushes you kind of to get to the next level? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in that game. And uh, we understood, you know, as an offense, they were they were really good. They got one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the league, um, some really good skill players. So we understood as an offense that uh, we had to do our job. And, um, you know, it, it came down to that we, we didn't do a good enough job of that. But, putting up enough points and helping our defense out on third downs. Um, so again, we, we got to find a way to, to get over that hump there. But um, as crazy as it seems, you know, we're, we're not focused on, on what they're doing right now or really for, for that matter, any team other than uh, game one. And I think uh, we all know who that is. That's the, that's the Steelers at home. And um, you now that's the, the biggest focus that we have on right now is getting to that point and um, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. One last one for you. Sean said that things inside the building and around the facility are about 60 to 70 percent back to normal. Do, do you see that a little bit? And, you know, does it give you a little bit, you know, just hope for, for maybe the near future things being 100 percent back to normal? Yeah, for sure. And being able to, to hang out outside the facility with guys and um, not have to social distance. But again, we're, we're taking those precautions and masking up here and um, you know, we want to be in the building. We want to be around each other. We want to be able to develop that camaraderie with the guys. Um, and we're, we're getting a taste of it. But, again, uh, we're, we're longing for that day. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Josh. Hey, Josh. Maple Bay. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for doing this. Um, you, touched, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but I kind of wanted to go back to it. You know, you took such a big step from year two to year three. And now as you enter another season, kind of coming off a season where you made, you know, such an impression, what do you have to do to take that next step forward? Because obviously, you know, 
it's going to be a little bit of a different step now than it was maybe at this time last year. Yeah, I mean, again, to, to, to take that next step, I've got to reevaluate what I'm doing on the field, um, be very honest with myself. Um, and I think that's one thing that I, I feel like I can brag about is I'm a very honest person with myself and I'm very realistic when it comes to uh, my play on the field and, and what I can do better and what I need to do better and, um, you know, approaching how to do that. So uh, there's a lot of things, like I said, that I look from last year that it's just, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Um, what can I do to help me not make this decision or make this throw again? So uh, it's finding those little, those little things and, you know, having Dable and Dorsey and, and Shay Tierney and even going back to Jordan Palmer, I'm um, just finding ways I can be more efficient in the pocket and moving um, better with the ball security. Uh, like I said, running in, in within the pocket um, and then making decisions and not trying to force things, no matter what the situation they call, call for. So um, that's where, again, trust in your teammates, trust in the plan, trust in coaching and, and your coaching staff and trust in the process um, and coach what, and what Coach McDermott is preaching to the team. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm sure last year you got sick of us asking the questions about the long ball and the deep throws down the field, and it was such an emphasis for you. Did you have anything this offseason? I know you mentioned the short throws and the playbook and stuff like that, but did you have kind of one specific thing where you're like, yes, I'm going to focus on that this offseason, and that's going to be something that's you know rock solid next year? Yeah, I think uh, just working on, on in-breaking routes. I think that's something that um, maybe wasn't my strongest suit last year. And, and like I said, the deep ends and the, and the short five guard under is just making sure that I'm putting it in the catchable spot for these guys to catch and run. And, um, you know, that's going to be a huge asset for us to be able to hit, hit those type of throws and allow our guys to stay up and stay on the move. Um, and I didn't do a good enough job of that last year. So I'm um, excited to, to continue to work on that with the guys here. Cool. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you. Thank you, Matt.